you used to be dead. Welcome to Jumpstart Your Faith, a 40 day devotional to help you get your faith muscles moving. My name is Matt Meyer with Seed Ministries International. Thank you again for joining us today. We are excited to have day 22 with you. It's a pretty good day. It's a pretty great day out here too. The sun is shining, starting to feel like spring all over again. Cicadas are chirping or whatever that sound is. If you know what it is, leave a comment below, like and subscribe, share all those good things. Let's get going. We're not starting with Ephesians today. We're starting with Romans. Romans 3, 23. <laughs> this is one of the first verses I learned as a kid. Why? Because religion wants to teach you that you deserve death. It's true. You do. You did. But that's the focus of religion as opposed to the focus of what Jesus Christ. With religion, you're never enough. There is nothing you can do that will ever be good enough for religion. The whole point of the law, the whole point of the law, which Paul called the, the Ten Commandments, the law of death written in stone. That sounds terrible. The, the covenant of death. The reason he's saying that isn't that the law is bad. He says in other places that the law isn't bad. The law is good. But what the law shows you is that you have to jump through all these hoops. You have to keep doing all these things. You have to make sacrifices. You have to make pilgrimages. You have to uh, uh, do the year of Jubilee. You have to keep all of those, uh, not just 10 commandments, but 600 whatever commandments that are written out in the Jewish law. You have to keep all of that. And then at the end of the day, it's still not enough. It's still never enough. You can keep everything perfectly and still the priest has to go in and still you have to make sacrifices because nothing you can do is ever good enough. That's the point of the law. Now he gave, he gave them the grace. He gave them grace really before that. We're not going to get into it, but there's a big part of uh, Genesis where he gave them the opportunity to operate in a different level of grace before they said, no, just tell us what to do and we'll do it. But we didn't, they didn't have the blood of Jesus. So it wasn't, they weren't possible to walk free from everything because they were waiting on the blood, except of course that Jesus was crucified before the world began. Oh, it gets really big here, but let me get back to the point at hand, which is religion makes you jump through hoops. The law makes you adhere to all of these things and you're never enough. And then God came along and said, that's not how this is. I'm sending my son because I love you that will redeem you from all of those things. If you look at the prodigal son, when he returned, he didn't have to, um, he didn't have to obey his father, be contrite. He said, I know I won't be accepted as a son, but maybe I can come back as a servant. He said, the, the father ran to him and he put, said, get me the best robe. I'm going to put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, and give him a fatted calf. Why? Because God said through his love that now that I'm allowed to freely love you, he couldn't love sin, but because the sin debt has been paid, because now I'm freely allowed to love you, you do not have to keep the things of the law anymore. The law was made complete in Christ. So Romans 3... 23 says for all for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that doesn't apply to you after you after you're redeemed but it did apply to you at some point you sinned it's not just you inherited the sin of Adam but you didn't do everything perfect after that so you were in a place that was already you were already a sinner and you sinned you were a sinner by nature because of, because of the transgression of Adam, how by one man's sin death reigned, came to all people. So you can blame Adam for that, but you can't blame Adam for anything ever that you've done wrong, any act of sin. You cannot blame that on anybody else. Through Adam, sin entered into the world. That's uh, Romans 5. Let's look at that. Romans 5, 12. Yeah. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin... So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So you inherited sin, and you sinned. You, like everybody else, like me, at some point in life, willingly participated in sin. The only person who never did that was Jesus. 
and the salary that you were supposed to be paid for that sin was death. Let's look at, yeah, this is Romans. I've got a notes hiding here. Romans 6, 23 says, this is the other one you learn. I'm walking you through the Romans road. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You were supposed to be paid wages for your sin, and your payment was you get to die. That sounds awful, but that's the wages of sin. And guess what? You did die. You died to sin. When you were baptized into Jesus, you died with him. You were buried with him, and you were raised up with him by the glory of God. Romans 6, 4 says that. I could spend a whole lot of time in Romans, and I do. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Let me update that language just to say, when Jesus was raised from the dead, by the glory of God, you were raised up with him and you are allowed now, you were placed in a position to walk in the newness of life. Your life is made new. Everything is new. And really at the heart of that is you are, you were dead. Now you are alive. So walk in that life. You don't have to let sin reign in your body. You do not have to obey its urging. You are an instrument of righteousness, and sin doesn't have any authority over you. You are free from it. You've been made free from sin. So let me look at Ephesians. <laughs> you thought we were going to get away from it, but we never will. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, And you hath he quickened. Quickened there is the old term for made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead, you've been made alive. And then go on to verse two, it says, we're in times past, that's my favorite thing, watch that light show up on my face when I do this. When in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that Satan, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience and that that word um, disobedience can also be translated destruction. So at times past, you were hanging out just like the world. You were being just like the world. And you were, you, you developed thought processes. Um, you developed the ideas of the world. They, they showed up. They're always around you all the time. They're always trying to encroach and they're trying to stretch in. Uh, get into you. That's why, you know, people like the, the Amish, I have great respect for people like the Amish. Um, I'm not Amish. I'm not planning on ever being Amish, but the the Anabaptist tra tradition, what I respect about that is they said, eh, we don't want to be like the world. We're going to separate ourselves from the world. You can turn that into religious trappings like you can anything else, but they're saying, uh, I, I so want to distance myself from the world that I'm not even going to look like them. And I have, I have respect for that. I understand the, the value in something like that. We don't have to be uh, away from the world. We can be in the world and not of the world. Don't participate in the things of the world. You don't have to participate in sin. Sin often comes from, you have three voices that you can hear at any given time. Uh, your own internal thoughts. You can have the voice of the enemy and you can hear the voice of God. And your own internal thoughts are really patterns that you've developed. Way, you're kind of writing your own operating system a lot of times inside your brain. So you're developing, your, the way, you way, you're developing the way you think about the world and the way you think about interacting with other humans and a way you think about uh, doing certain activities, good or bad, that you've developed in your own mind. And the way you get rid of that is you renew your you renew your mind by the word of God. You start transforming those thought patterns. Uh, there's a really cool thing in neuroscience. It's like little trees inside your brain, and it's it's uh, 
pathways that you've developed and your brain want, is an efficiency machine. So it, you want to um, use as little energy as possible. So you continue to do the same things. It's kind of what habits are. It's just, it's easier to do a habit than to break a habit than to be something else because you've already established that pathway. And like, if you've got a creek bed, it's dry, you pour some water in it, it's gonna go to the creek bed. It's not gonna make its own path. It takes more effort. Uh, to make his own path, that effort is coming by renewing your mind by the word of God. Um, but when you when you stop using those paths, those neuro pathway trees kind of pop out of existence. When your brain realizes, oh, I don't need to use that anymore, then um, I'm just going to get rid of it. I've got something else to use instead. So your brain is rewriting itself. You can rewire your brain. Uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf, actually, I think that might be the title of her book, but she's got a great a uh, series of books, lots of books. Uh, I'll, I'll link some of that down below. That'll help uh, help you change the way you think. But you also, you hear your own voice. You also hear the voice of the enemy. And here's a trick I learned. Someone uh, shared with shared this with me. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, uh, it was another book. I'll link that one down below too, why not? Uh, I don't have the title with me right now, but I'll, I'll put it down there, you can check it out. Um, which is, when the enemy talks to you, it's sometimes accusatory in the sense of like you shouldn't have done that you're such a bad person you need to go in a corner and cry and whatever that kind of stuff but it also he tricks you by using the personal pronouns like i'm such a bad person i shouldn't have done that i should go sit in a corner that's not your voice if if that those words come to you and they are leading down a path of destruction if the if they don't line up with the word of god then you Rome, uh is it romans i don't even know put it down there in the comments below i'm just asking for a lot of comments this time if you know where this is where it says um that we take every thought captive unto the obedience of christ you have about half a second when you get a thought if you accept it or reject it and you are allowed to reject the thoughts that don't line up with the Word of God. God's thoughts are always going to line up with this. They are always going to be for your good. They may be correction. They may tell you, hey, don't think that way. But everything is always going to be done from a position of love. There's perfect peace in His presence. So you're always in the presence of God. If you want to get rid of uh, you're always at peace in the presence of God. I want to make sure I said that, that the right way. You are always at peace in the presence of God. If you are not at peace, if then it then it's probably not God showing up. But find what the Word of God says. You even when He is correcting you, even when He says, "Hey, you can't do this anymore. You have to stop. You have to stop acting this way. You have to stop this habit." He's not going to say it in a way that doesn't also bring love and peace because he is a good, good father. And that Prince of Peace, Jesus, the Prince of Peace is always with you. The Holy Spirit is the comforter and he is always within you. So if you want to break your relationship with any kind of bad habit, bring it to God. Just go right to him and say, God, I've, I've let sin reign over me and I ask you to forgive me and to get uh, get me back on, lead me on the path I need to go to get free from it. But I want you to know at the core of everything, you don't earn his love. There's nothing you can do to earn it. He already poured it out on you. He already gave you every ounce of his love when he shed his blood on the tree for you. God absolutely loves you and God sees you as righteous. You are made his own righteousness. So any kind of repentance isn't an act of your will to try to make yourself accepted by God. He accepts you right now just as you are because it's not your level of goodness that makes you accepted. It's your accepting Jesus that makes him accept you. God loves you. God wants the best for you. When you want to change your habits or when he's nudging you on the inside with that still small voice, just go towards him, not away. Don't try to hide. Go right to the loving father who's got his arms right, wide open. He's running down the path to meet you and he will change you from the inside out. You are alive. You are righteous. Now go and live like it. Say this with me. Say this out loud. I was dead, but now I'm alive. On the count of three. One, two, 
3. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you made us alive in Christ. Thank you that you've filled us with life and light, that we are filled to overflowing, that we are filled with abundance, that we have the goodness of God at operating within us. We thank you, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for leading and guiding us and directing us and showing us any wrong ways we need to change. We thank you that you are always for our good and any change that you desire of us is always for our good. And we do it because we love you and we love you because you first loved us. We thank you, God, and we give you glory in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you again for joining with us. Uh, we're excited to see you again tomorrow. Please like, subscribe, share, check out uh, the links down below, the ones I mentioned before, but we've also got a free ebook down there, 10 Transformational New Testament Prayers. We also have uh, links to a few other uh, great things, including our website, and we'll see you again tomorrow.